In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create player movement, including acceleration and making it smooth in just 10 lines of code. Let's get started. Now, one of the first things you probably want to do when you start out with coding your player movement is changing the input map so that you can use different buttons than the standardly programmed arrow keys on your keyboard. So we're going to make use of WASD movement in this tutorial. We do that by going to the project, project settings, and then under the input map, we can type in new actions. For example, right. We can add that action using this add button. And now we got right down here. Now with this little plus, I can add a key and I can press the D and say OK. And now I've mapped the D key to the action right. And right is the name of the action that we'll be calling in the code. Now, as you can see, I've already added left, down and up for W, S and an A. So we're good to go on the rest of the code. Now, the code I'll be adding to this player scene. This player scene is nothing more than a kinematic body 2D, which is renamed to player. We have a sprite with a sprite sheet. That sprite sheet has eight vertical frames and 28 horizontal frames. So this means it's an eight directional sprite sheet so we can move in eight different directions. It's currently loaded on frame 196. We have a collision uh, polygon which is not shown currently as we don't need that right now. And we have a camera 2D, which will be following the player around wherever it goes. And of course we have the animation player so that we can actually activate some animations. The animations in this animation player are already loaded. If you want to know more about that and how you can do that, there's a link up there. Now under the player, I've already prepared, let's close that. I've already prepared um, a script, a very basic script, which has two variables on the top. It has speed, which is 400. That's the speed with which the player will be able to walk on the map. We have the move direction, set default by a vector 0, 0. We need that. Um, of basically, we're going to distill the move direction out of the movement function, and we'll be saving it in this script variable so that we can use that as input for the animation loop, so that constantly the animation is being updated with the right direction in which we're moving. Then we have the process and the physics process functions, the default functions of Godot. The delta of the physics process is going to be um, equal to the step of the physics engine. And the delta of the process function is equal with the frame rate of the game, so the FPS. Um, we are needing the physics process engine for our movement function. As with movement, usually comes collisions. And with collisions, we need physics. And the process function will use to update the animation. As that is only an update of which texture is currently being used in the game, we don't need any physics for that, so we better put that on the process function. Now with that done, let's start coding. Do you want to learn how to design and make games or maybe you just want to learn more about Godot? Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. I also stream my own game development on a title called Soul Whisperer I'm making every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. Check out that link down in the description below and you'll also find a Discord link to my server. Now let's continue with player movement. Now to get started first, a tip, don't put the code straight on the physics process function, but simply call a function that will have the code for movement. Because you'll be creating a couple of functions that will want to run under the physics process engine. And if you uh, type the code straight underneath here, you're going to get all P's and snippets of code that are unrelated in what they actually try to achieve in the game. But yeah, because of that, it will be much harder to read. It's much easier to say, okay, under the physics process, I do my movement loop and that movement loop is a separate function. So take that as a tip. What we do here, these are four lines of code. And with these four lines of code, we got full player movement. So if you want to do something fast, take these four lines of code and you're golden. What we do is under this move direction here, you can see we, we determine the X and the Y. That is this move direction vector two, that's this zero and that zero, the X and the Y of that variable. What we do is we listen to the input is action press right. And this right is the action button we just mapped earlier in the project settings. So this right, this left, that up and that down. This input is action press right is basically going to return a Boolean. And that Boolean is true or false. But by turning that Boolean into an integer, we're going to get a one or a zero. And then we can suddenly do some calculations. So if the player is pressing right, we want them to move to the right of the screen, which is X positive. 
that's why we then subtract the left movement. So if the player presses the A and D buttons at the same time, left and right, this would come out to be zero. And of course, that's what we want because the player is pressing both buttons at the same time. If you would only be pressing right, you're basically gonna get the formula one minus zero is one. So you get positive X movement. If he's only pressing left, you'll get zero minus one is minus one, negative X movement. We do exactly the same for the Y, but here we subtract the up from down. And because I'm working with isometric art, and usually towels in isometric art are drawn with the X, uh, the X pixels twice as much as the amount of Y pixels in a single towel. If you want the player to move along the grid lines of isometric art, you divide by flow two. If you're working with forward angled art or top down art, simply remove this divided by flow two. You can remove one bracket over here and you can remove this first bracket over there as you no longer need those. Now that we have this move direction, so that's basically an X which has three outcomes, three possible outcomes, minus one, zero, or plus one, and we got the I with a three possible outcomes, in, in our case because of this flow, minus a half, zero, or plus a half. We then create a new variable, which is gonna be the motion, and that motion is going to be that move direction that we just defined with these two, and we normalize it. That means that when the player is moving diagonally, he's not getting the X plus Y, um, let's say, uh, factor. If you see some speed runs sometimes, you often see in speed runs that players are constantly moving diagonally. They don't do that in every game. They only do that in the games where the developers have not normalized diagonal movement. And because they don't normalize it, you actually can move faster when you walk diagonally than when you walk straight forward. That's not the kind of behavior I want in my games. So I normalize the move direction and then I multiply it with the speed. So instead of uh, the move direction just being an X1 and an I1, we multiply it with 400 so we actually get some real movement. Then we input that motion into a move and slide function and the move and slide function has delta built into it. So this 400 is gonna be cut up into a, a very small amount and that's gonna be run every single frame. You can also use the move and collide function. The difference between the two is that move and slide, as soon as you have a coalition, you collide with something, you slide next to that coalition based on the input that you're given. If you have a move and collide function, your movement will stop and hold and be nothing the moment you collide with something. Move and slide usually works a little bit better for player movement. Now with this, we can run the game and with our WASD, you can see we now got some movement. We don't have any animations yet. So I think the first thing you should do is add some animations to this character and then we can add acceleration. And that acceleration is basically gonna mean that now when I press a button, we immediately, this character is moving with its maximum speed of 400, but it would be much better if it sort of slowly ramps up in the speed that will give a much more natural movement. But we'll be able to see that a lot better once that animation is in here. So we're first gonna do the animation, then we'll work on the acceleration, and that acceleration, added that to this four, piece, four lines of code, I promise you, it's gonna be in 10 lines. So let's do that. For the animations, we're gonna be calling in the process function, the animation loop. Same reason as for why we make a movement loop function, you don't wanna be putting all kinds of different snippets of code in this one single process function. It's much easier to call separate functions that you have created. This animation loop looks a little bit intimidating, but it's actually very easy. And I've explained this e uh, earlier in another tutorial. So if you want some more details on this, you can click that card up there. Basically what we do, we define three variables. We have an animation direction, south, west, east, north, southwest, southeast, etc. We have an animation mode, whether we're standing still, idle, or whether we're walking, that will be walk. And that we have an animation. That animation is the animation name in the animation player. If we look at my animation player, you see that we have idle east, idle north, idle north east, northwest, etc., etc., etc. And the same for walk, eight directional. Now we're gonna match that move direction that we've created and we know that the X has three possible outcomes and the Y has three possible outcomes. So we also know that these are the possibilities of outcomes, minus one zero, one zero, zero, zero point five, zero, minus zero point five, minus one, minus zero point five, etc., etc. And these represent a direction. Now I make use of the wind directions with north, east, south, uh, west, etc. 
You can also make use of normal arrow directions like up, right, left, uh, up, down, or up, up, left, up, right, whatever you want. Um, that's just personal preference. So based on this match with move direction, we know which animation direction we should be playing. Then we can also say that if the move direction is something else than zero, zero, which means no input, then we know that we're walking. If the vector is zero, zero of move direction, then we know no single button is pressed and we know that the animation should be idle. Then we build up the animation by taking the animation mode, walk or idle, we add an underscore to it and we add the animation direction that will be one of these. Now with that, we put that into the animation player and that's how we have built up one of these animations which will then be playing. So now when we play that game, we now have some animations for our wear bear. Now with that done, let's get that acceleration in there. Now for the acceleration, we need to change a couple of things up on the top here. First of all, we need a speed variable, but that speed variable needs to be zero because once the player starts walking, the first moment he presses this button, he has no speed and we want to slowly accelerate. But we want to accelerate until a maximum value. So that's what the 400 is going to be. It's going to be our maximum speed. Now, of course, we also need some acceleration. So we add acceleration 1200. Now that sounds very big, but it actually isn't, and I'll get to that in a moment. What we need is right here, when we multiply with speed, we want to change that speed value. So we can say that speed is plus is, and we're gonna take the acceleration, and we're gonna multiply that with the delta. Now remember, this delta is a very, very small value. It might be something in the line of 0.03. So by multiplying the delta of acceleration, acceleration actually becomes really small, but it is synced to the physics process engine. With that said, we need the delta variable in this function. We don't have it available to us. So the delta, which is um, being produced by the physics process function, will pass it along into our movement loop and will tell our movement loop it's going to be receiving that delta. That way it becomes available for this function to be used on line number 18, code line number 18. Now, of course, this will just go on into forever. And this means that the player can access his maximum speed of 400. So we need to verify that if the speed is bigger than the maximum speed, in that case, we want to set the speed equal to the max speed. In other words, if it would have been surpassed to 430, it would have been bigger than max speed. Then we just set the speed, which is 430 at mo that moment, back to the max speed, which is 400. That way we never exceed our maximum speed. Now that speed is gonna be taken into this move direction and we're good. But if soon as the player releases one of its buttons, the speed value should be set back to zero so that we have again that acceleration when the player starts moving again. So in order to do that, we gotta say that if this move direction is equal to a vector to zero, zero, because that means that no move button was pressed at that moment. At that moment, we can say, okay, this speed is equal to zero. And else, we know that we're moving. So we can put that, code, that little piece of code here. Not only will we now verify if the player has stopped moving, has stopped pressing any buttons and reset the speed so the acceleration can kick in again, we've also made sure that this code, this move and slide function only runs when there is actual player input. That way we relieve the physics engine a little bit from doing calculations that he actually doesn't need to do because there's no input to handle anyway. Now, when we play this, you'll see that the player, every time he starts moving, is slowly accelerating into its maximum speed. And to show you how this works, we can even lower this value to an extremely low value, and you'll be able to see how we slowly accelerate into a direction. Now, this feels unnatural. This is not good for player experience, so we'll just keep that to 1200, but there you can see how this acceleration is working. And now our player feels a lot more natural with slowly starting up its running sequence. And that's how you program smooth player code in exactly 10 lines. 
That was it for today, guys. Hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. Also, as always, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch, where I stream my own game development on Soul Whisper, a title I'm developing right now. Also, don't forget that Discord server. A lot of people are already joining. I would love to see you there. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on going. See you later, guys.